Hi, this is Ali Arango from Game Visuals, and today I want to show you how to do movement and animation for a side-scroller shooter inside of GDevelop 5. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you want to do is click on Create a New Project. You'll see these options here pop up. What you want to do is scroll down and look to where you see Empty Game. This is what we're going to click eventually. However, before that, what we want to do is choose to where our game files are going to be stored at. So we're going to click on choose folders or choose folder. I'm going to go to desktop and I made a folder right here. So I'm going to double click on this folder. So now when I click select folder, which I didn't do yet, when I do this, our game files are going to be stored here. So I'm going to click select folder. Okay, so now with that done, now that we know where our game files are going to go to, now I'm going to select empty game. Okay, when I did that, this menu here popped up. What we want to do is focus our attention on scenes. Scenes are how, scenes are basically the different parts of our game and how it's going to be uh, handled by GDevelop. So what we want to do is look to this plus button right here and we can see right here it says click to add a scene. So we're going to click this plus button and now we have a new scene. Now this new scene is where uh, most of our game assets are going to go and this is where our game is going to take place in for the most part. I guess yeah, for the most part, yeah, for, for some new scenes. So we're going to left click here. I'm going to select rename. I'm going to name this uh, game one. Okay, so now that I have this scene, now I'm going to just left click on this area here. And when I did that, you saw, you can see this popped up, these options here and here. This right here, our project panel. If we want to get this out of the way, we can click the X button to get that out, that out of the way. If we want to bring it back, we can click here and it just comes right back. First thing we want to do is bring in our player character. So we're going to click on this plus button here. Then we're going to, after we clicked on that plus button, we see these different options here. You want to focus your attention on Sprite. I'm going to left click here, and then this is going to be our player. So I'm going to name this player. And what we want to do now is look to this plus to the right here. And then we want to look to this plus to the left here. And what we want to do here is bring in our idle, uh, our sprites for our idle animation. So I have this folder set up here, and I have this folder named idle. So I'm going to left click there. I'm going to hold control and press A. That's a shortcut to select all of these frames. I'm then going to click open. Okay, if you're wondering where these frames uh, came from, I am a 3D animator, modeler, and rigger. I modeled, animated, and rigged uh, this robot inside of Blender. I will put a uh, link in the description so that you can get to these frames so that you can follow along with this tutorial. Okay, so now that we have these frames here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where we see Animation Zero, and this Animation Zero is associated with these frames. So I'm going to name this Idle. Okay, we need to bring in some other frames for other animations, and, and we need to bring in walk frames as well as jump frames. So what we're going to do is go to the right, click this plus button. I'm going to name this walk for this next animation that we're about to bring in. So just be aware you have your animation name and then underneath that is going to be your, uh, your animation frames. Okay, so I'm going to click this plus button, go to where I have my robot sprite files at. I'm going to double click for walk, hold control, press A, and then I'm going to click open. Okay, so now we have our walk frames. Now we need our jump frames, so I'm going to go to this plus to the right, click there, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go to this animation too. I'm going to name this jump. Then I'm going to click this plus to the left. Now I'm going to go and get the jump frames. So I'm going to hold control, press A, and then I'm going to click open to bring those frames in. Okay, so now we have these frames set up to be our animations. However, we need to set up the timing for these frames. So if I click preview, so I'm right next to our idle animation. Basically what's going on is each frame is being played each second, and that's too slow. And the reason why that's going on is you see this uh, clock symbol right here, that one? This is controlling the timing of this. So there's a, a few things we want to do here, or 
two things I should say we want to do here. One, we want this to be a looping animation. To see where this is, don't loop. We're going to left click here and change this to loop. And then for this, we're going to click here. We're going to change this to 0.08 for the timing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the preview. And we can see this looks good. I think the timing of that looks good now. So we'll click close. So now basically we need to do the same thing with the other animation. So we're going to scroll down, select don't loop so that this actually loops. We're going to change this to 0.08. And then we're going to click preview just to take a look. I think that looks good. We're going to click close. For this jump animation, we actually don't want this to loop. So for this, we're going to leave this at don't loop. We're going to go here for this one. We're going to change this to 0.08. And then we're going to click preview. And for this, since it's not looping, it stops. We can just click reply. And I think that looks good as well. So we're going to click close now. OK, so this is set up as far as our animation. So now we're going to click apply. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to left click and drag our player onto our screen. So I'm rolling my mouse wheel back. We can see this black area here that represents our work area. I'm going to hold shift hover my mouse over this uh, square right here. And while I'm holding shift, I'm just moving my mouse in to scale this down. So we have our player right there. Now we need ground for this player to walk on. Uh, one of the very cool things in GDevelop is you don't always have to go outside of GDevelop to get objects or to have objects. You can actually make objects inside of GDevelop, which is very cool. So what we're going to do is go to our right. We're going to click on this plus button to the right. We're going to look to where we see this tiled sprite. We're going to left click. And then we're, for our object name, we're going to name this ground. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to this brush here. We're going to left click on the brush. Once we did that, this text popped up that said, that says edit with Piscals. So we're going to left click here right on that text. This uh, image editor pops up and this image editor actually allows us to make and work with sprites inside of GDevelop. Very cool. So what we're going to do is go to this color picker right here. We're going to left click on here. I'm going to click on the yellow. And I went here because I want a brownish color. So now I'm just going to click outside of the color picker. I'm going to click on the paint bucket and then I'm going to left click here to fill this square. Uh, okay, with that done, I'm going to click and name this image ground. It's really not that important what you name the, uh, the actual image, uh, but it's named ground. So now we're going to left click and select save to G develop. Now we're going to click apply. So now we have this ground object right here. So what we're going to do is left click and drag this on or into our work area. We're going to left click on this. When we do that, we see these different squares uh, pop up along with this circle. The circle allows us to rotate things. This square right here, the top one to the right, we're going to left click and drag. And this lets us actually drag out. So now we have ground to work with. Okay, one of the uh, cool things in GDevelop is because I'm an artist, when I go into a game engine, I want to see something happen. Something cool happened to some of the artwork that I brought into this game engine. And GDevelop allows you to do cool things with your artwork extremely quickly. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to give our player the ability to move. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to double click on player. We're then going to look to uh, our panel that opened up. We're going to look to where we see behaviors. We're going to left click on behaviors. When we did that, we see this purple line underneath behaviors. We're going to go to our right and click plus. And now we have these different options here. We want to select platform uh, character. So I'm going to left click there. Now we have these different options that we can adjust as far as we want how the, this uh, platform character behavior to work. And what this platform behavior does is it automatically sets things up for our player or whatever object we choose to put this behavior onto. So that when we push our arrow keys, our player will move you know, left and right, be able to jump. It is uh, very cool and very quick, which I like a lot. So we're going to click apply. Okay, so now that we have that done, our player has the ability to walk back and forth. Our player also has the ability to jump. And with that jump, that platform character put gravity on this player. So we need to set up this ground so that this ground will 
uh, be able to hold the player and uh, also not have the player fall through the ground. So we're going to left click on the ground. We're going to double click on ground. Then we're going to click on behaviors. We can see there's that purple line again. We're going to look to our right. We're going to look to our options here. This time, last time we picked uh, platform character. This time we're going to select platform. So we left click there. And I'm just going to uncheck this ledges can be grabbed. And then I'm going to select apply. And now our platform character, not our, our platform character here and our platform has the ability to work as it should. Okay, so now when we click our preview button, our character has gravity, our character has their idle animation working. When I push the arrow keys, you can see the character is moving back and forth. If I press the space bar, our character jumps. So our character doesn't have the animation set up. That's part of the reason for this tutorial. However, it's cool that you can see that the uh, idle animation working and that our character is able to jump and have gravity on uh, our platform. However, see how the character is hovering above the platform here? Uh, I'll show you why that is and I'll show you how to fix that. So I'm just gonna left click to close that preview for now. If you're following along with this tutorial, I recommend you go to File and then Save. 